Small-scale African farmers produce as much as 80% of their country's food supplies, but they're among the most vulnerable to hunger. In Ghana, agriculture is the largest employer and sector of the economy. It makes up about one-third of the country's GDP. Every link in the agricultural value chain, from growing crops or raising animals to processing, adds value. Farmers are the first link in the chain, but they are often underpaid or taken advantage of when they sell their produce. Canadian NGO Farm Radio International is currently working on combating this problem in Ghana. It is the only international nonprofit organization dedicated exclusively to serving African farming families and rural communities through radio. Farm Radio International works with more than 650 radio organizations in 40 countries across Sub-Saharan Africa, reaching tens of millions of listeners. It is at the forefront of combining radio with other information and communication technologies, such as mobile phones. This helps small-scale farmers access life-changing information and opportunities to have a stronger voice in their own development. In Ghana, Farm Radio International partnered with four radio stations for the Farmer Value Chain Development Project. The radio stations are teaching farmers the best ways to add value to their produce. The weekly broadcasts share information on production, post-harvest practices, and market services. This helps farmers obtain the best price for their produce. The project started in March 2015 and is formally called Radio for Farmer Value Chain Development in Ghana. It consists of two types of interactive radio programs, participatory radio campaigns, or PRCs, and market information services, also known as Radio Marketplace. In two and a half years, the project is expected to reach more than a million farmers. In northern Ghana, the project focuses on cowpea and guinea fowl. Ramatu Youssef is a cowpea farmer in Ghana's northern region. She's 35 years old, has no formal education, but has been farming her two-acre land since listening to the radio program. Before the program, I didn't know how to apply the seeds and how to do the germination test. Now I know that if you test 10 seeds and at least 6 to 8 germinate, they're good seeds, otherwise they're bad. From the radio program, I also learned how to prepare my land, such as planting in rows and using a rope tied from one end to the other to make sure I'm sewing in a straight line. We use pigs bags to store the cowpea. A pigs bag is two layers of rubber bag in a sack. This keeps the air, animals and bacteria out. Cowpea is very important for our consumption. When I don't have money, I can easily cook it at home and sell the rest to sponsor my child's schooling. If you happen to know of 20-year-old Ayuba and 45-year-old Abu are both cowpea farmers from the same community. Young Ayuba said he learned what was aired on the program through word of mouth from other listeners. He used to harvest five to six bags from his three-acre land before the program, but his yield has since tripled. By right now, if, if you are able to, you know, take good care about it. As far as we you know, we are now having the knowledge about it. You can able to harvest more. Oh, you, about the three, because you can get about 10 to 15 bucks. Abu says he regularly partakes in the PRCs and has learned important marketing and crop rotation skills from the program. I have listened in the programs from Might FM. Um, farm Radio International. Uh, yes, I'm calling it several sometimes and asking pro, uh, and added my questions or I, I add some instructions to them and ask some questions what I didn't understand. So I now know that when you are, you are a farmer, you are going to farm, you must uh, use shifting cultivation. Yeah, well, the program changed my life to be a good farmer, better than the, uh, my beginning farming. Other skills learned from the program include weeding and fertilizer application. The 60-year-old grandmother, a former trader, farms her two acres of land with her grandchildren. The radio program helped her get started in farming. I have to help feed my grandchildren too, so I'm now also farming besides trading. My grandchildren help me apply the skills I learned, such as weeding, row planting, fertilizer application, and so on. 
Since I started farming, I use the cow pee in cooking for my grandchildren and it's very healthy. I also sell some to make money for my basic needs and to support my family, especially one of my sons who is studying in university. This 50-year-old farmer also regularly calls into the radio program and has even won an award for best guinea fowl farmer in the region. He now has more than 600 healthy birds. I participated in the radio program. Any time they call me, I also, any time the program is on, I also call to explain my experience, what I do to get a good number of guinea fowls. Uh, the market's case, at times, we call uh, uh, these uh, hotels, uh, restaurants, to come in and buy them. At times, we we'll put them in the cage and then we we'll send them to Kumasi and sell. He says the program taught him how to feed the guinea fowl, administer drugs and antibiotics, keep the birds clean and build their housing. He expects his guinea fowl base to skyrocket this year and the next. Uh, it, 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 it makes me fine and I'm happy because, because of uh, my hard working and I got it and I, I believe it will help me. I'm going to use it so that I can do more. Uh -huh. Yeah, it has improved my life because the guinea fowl, through that one, I used to pay my children's school fee and uh, my health insurance. Another guinea fowl farmer also says the radio program helped improve her life. She's around 35 years old based on her own estimate and says farming has enabled her to support her family. Just sitting around waiting for my husband to sponsor the household isn't enough income, so I have to support him and support our children who are in school. We now pay the school fees and feed the household from the guinea fowl income. I learned how to take care of them and medicate them properly so that they don't die. Although the program is still ongoing, it has already helped farmers improve their productivity and achieve better food security in Ghana. By focusing on cowpea and guinea fowl, two nutritious products, the project is helping combat issues such as low yields, high mortality rates in guinea fowl, crops destroyed by rain and disease, pesticides, and access to markets. <laughs>